Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I'm the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Azure Arc YouTube series. This is Azure Arc Deep Dive as well, so um, we, we, we're staying quite, we started off high level kind of introducing the topic, but now we're getting quite detailed in the demos that we're doing as well as the sort of content that we're talking about as well. So this is quite an advanced topic, I suppose. You need to understand Azure um services as well as the uh, on-premises services as well so this is episode six and we're just continuing we're going to finish off the azure arc resource bridge topic which we spoke about and um, we didn't do any demo but we're going to do a demo in this episode without further ado let's get started uh with today's episode which is part two of the azure arc resource bridge um subtopic and we're going to do um uh, talk a little bit about security the security overview we're going to talk about deployment overview and then talk about maintenance and we're going to jump into a topic the the demo where we actually do some management of, of so a couple of episodes ago we added uh vcenter vsphere so we're going to actually do some management and show we can manage that from azure um so let's start off by doing a bit of an overview of the security so first of all manage identity so by default microsoft entra uh, system assigned my identity is created um to is created by the Azure resource bridge so Azure resource bridge currently supports only system assigned identity um so the cluster identity operator identity initiates the first outbound communication and then fetches the managed service identity the msi uh, certif uh, certif uh, certificate certificate uh, used by other agents uh, for communication with azure um, from an identity and access control perspective, Azure Ag Resource Bridge is represented as a resource in a resource group inside an Azure subscription. And access to this resource is controlled by standard Azure role based access control. Uh, and from the IAM page in the Azure portal, you can verify who has access to that. Uh, users and applications who are granted the contributor or administrator role to the resource group can make changes to that resource bridge, including deploying and deleting cluster extensions as well. From a data residency perspective, Azure Arc Resource Bridge is going to follow data residency regulations specific to each region. Uh, if applicable, data is backed up in a secondary repair region in the accordance with the data residency regulations. Otherwise, data resides only in that specific region and data is not stored or processed across different uh, geographies. Uh, so data at rest, Azure Arc Resource Bridge stores resource information in Azure Cosmo DB, uh, where all data is encrypted at rest as well. Uh, and then from a logs perspective, the activity logs in Azure platform log uh, that provide insight into subscription level events. And this includes tracking when the Azure resource bridge is, is modified, deleted or added. You can view the activity logs in Azure portal or retrieve entries from PowerShell and Azure CLI as well. And by default, the activity log events are ret uh, retained for 90 days um, before they are deleted. Uh, so we've seen a uh, similar architecture. So this is the Azure Arc or ARB deployment. So th we saw the architecture in the last episode. This is actually a, a workflow um, architecture. So it shows the deployment workflow. We've got, again, the, the numbers in purple um, as well. They're going to help you sort of look at the different points and what's installed where. So Azure CLI is required to deploy the Azure Arc resource bridge. And when you deploy Azure Arc resource bridge with, with the sort of corresponding partner product, Azure CLI, so that's VMware, vSphere, SC, VMM, etc., or Azure Local. Azure CLI commands may be combined into an automation script along with the additional uh, uh, provider specific commands. Um, so, some of the Azure CLI commands include uh, AZ uh, Arc Appliance Create Config, uh, and this command creates configuration files used by Azure Arc Resource Bridge. We then got uh, AZ Arc Appliance Validate. Uh, the, this is the validate command that checks configuration files for the, the bad schema, uh, the cloud and core validations, network settings, proxy settings, etc. We then got the, the, the command AZ uh, Arc Appliance um, Prepare. So this command downloads the OS images from uh, Microsoft and is used to deploy the on-premises appliance VM as well. It usually takes about 10 to 30 minutes for that to complete. We then got uh, RAZ Arc Appliance Deploy. This is a deploy command. It deploys the on-premises instance of Azure Arc Bridge as an appliance VM, bootstrap to Kubernetes management cluster. Uh, we've got the uh, AZ Arc Appliance Creates. This command creates our Azure Arc resource bridge in Azure as an ARM resource that establishes that connection between the ARM resource and the on-premises appliance. Um, so there's a lot of different commands you can use as well. 
Uh, let's talk about Azure Ag maintenance now, uh, and then we're going to jump into the demo. So to keep your Azure Ag resource redeployment online and operational, you need to perform maintenance operations such as updating credentials, monitoring upgrades, and ensuring that the appliance VM is online. So just some prerequisites to maintain the on-premises appliance VM, the appliance configuration files generated during deployment need to be saved in a secure location and made available on the management machine. The YAML configuration files are used for, for two sort of uh, for two AZ Arc Appliance CLI commands to delete Arc Resource Bridge via Azure Arc uh, Appliance Delete command and to manually upgrade the Arc uh, Resource Bridge via the AZ Arc Appliance Upgrade command. So um, Arc Resource Bridge consists of an on-premises appliance VM as we know. The appliance VM stores credentials and they're used to access a control plane of the on-premises infrastructure to view and manage on-premises resources. The credentials used by Azure Arc Resource Bridge are the same ones provided during the deployment of the, uh, the resource bridge. And this gives you sort of resource bridge visibility to on-premises resources as well. Um, we'll talk about upgrading Arc Resource Bridge. Azure Arc Resource Bridge should be upgraded once every six months to refresh critical certificates within the appliance required to maintain security and communications to Azure Cloud. Uh, and you can create resource bridge uh, health alerts, basically a health rule in the Azure portal to monitor the state of that Azure Ag resource bridge. Uh, you can also delete. You might you might want to delete it once you know if you might be finished with it or you might might have had an issue with it. You can delete it, and this you know deployment failure might be the cause or when a resource bridge is no longer needed, essentially. Okay, so let's jump back into the Azure portal now. We're going to actually do some management on on the the vSphere that we we kind of onboarded a few episodes ago. So please join me in the demo. Hello, welcome back. We're in the Azure portal again, and in the last demo that we did, it wasn't the last episode, it was the episode before that, um, because episode four, we actually did a demo of onboarding vCenter, uh, which went really well, so I was really chuffed with that, and that, that kind of had a few issues, and obviously I showed you those in the demo, um, but now I actually want to um, do a bit of an inventory. So here we've got our IT Geek vCenter, so this is my vCenter server, which is on-premises. Um, and the first thing we need to really do is, is, is view, the, view the inventory, so this tells us all the virtual machines. So there's my management, which has my own personal management machine there. Um, and this tells us all the different sort of virtual machines that we've got there. It tells us all the resource pools and clusters. It gives us all the templates there um, as well. It tells us our networking. And so this is all on-premises, not enough to do with Azure, is it, really? So we've got data stores there. Um, so from a virtual machine perspective, let's jump in there and actually have a look at what we can do. So I've got my, my management VM there. Uh, and what we can do is enable this in Azure. And what that's going to allow us to do is uh, onboard an agent. Um, so we've got that. Let's put it in the Arc resource group. Uh, so enabling the guest manager is going to enable the Azure extensions like update manager, etc. So that is uh, going to onboard. Um, so let's just wait for that to complete. Okay, so that's been deployed now. So let's go to the resource group and we should see that VM. There it is, SDAZ Arc. Um, so that's our VM then. From here, we can actually start to manage this as a resource. Um, we can restart it, we can stop it, we can delete it. Um, we can look at the networking, we can look at the disks. Um, we could actually add another interface adapter if we wanted. So I can add a disk from here, which is really good. Uh, we can resize the VM if you want. So I've always got two CPU and then the four gig of memory. We can connect to it from here as well. Um, so we can configure that. We'll configure that in a, in a, in a different demo. We can onboard security from here. So um, we can configure that. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, I just wanted to show how we can onboard a VM once we've done and managed vCenter. Uh, I'm going to do some of these in the next demo, I think, and try to do some more VM management. Um, so, yeah, that's just what to show how now we've, now we've onboarded vCenter, the options we've got to try and add 
uh, VM agents and stuff like that through um, through Azure. So in the next video or the next demo, sorry, what we'll do is we'll do a bit more management of VMs, start to onboard with Security Center and management of VMs and, and you know update management and stuff like that, Azure Monitor. Um, so I'll we'll add some disk and stuff like that. So thank you very much for watching. Just a reminder to those looking to do Microsoft exams, um, I have a whole load of content or as a, for members only, level one members, level two members, level three members, and I've got things from the MS900 fundamentals, M365 fundamentals, basically the Azure AZ900 fundamentals. I've got AZ140 for those people wanting to do AVD. AZ700 for people wanting to do more security, uh, sorry, more networking. I've got SC200 and SC300 for people more, more on security. I've got, I've got lots more content, so I'll put the link um, in the description to join as a member. Get joined and have a look, and, and hopefully you can help, help you on your learning journey. I am a Microsoft certified trainer, so I'm not just uh, some crazy guy rambling on the internet. <laughs> I do know my stuff, and I am certified to, to train people. Um, so yeah, if you're not a member, make sure you get joined as a member and take advantage of all the cool perks I've got. Uh, so thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.